If you want to track the location of Wi-Fi devices with an Android phone, we'll show you how to take Wiggle Wi-Fi data and use it in Jupyter Notebooks to map the location on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While iOS devices have made it impossible to see MAC addresses, making tools like Wiggle Wi-Fi pretty much useless, Android phones have embraced Wiggle Wi-Fi and make it easy to locate the location of nearby wireless devices. Now one of the caveats of this is relying on Wiggle.net to process that information. And if you would prefer to keep your wiggling a little bit more private, then there is an alternative I want to show you today. Now you can take your Wiggle Wi-Fi data, export it as a CSV, and import it into Jupyter Notebooks, which is a free and Python-based analysis tool that allows us to break it down and even map the location of individual devices. We can go a step further and start filtering them, so in theory, you could walk through a building and, through a series of filters, locate the exact location of every Wi-Fi-enabled printer. Now, to do this, you'll just need a computer capable of running Python and an Android phone. And once you have both of those, even if it's a pretty old Android phone, these two things should be everything you need to start analyzing Wi-Fi data. If you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, but once you have Python fully updated on your computer, then we should be ready to go. Today, we're going to get started using our own Wiggle Wi-Fi data generated on an Android cell phone in order to map and locate Wi-Fi devices and eventually filter through them to find ones that we might be looking for. This could be something like printers or Roku devices or something else you might know a vulnerability to, or you could just be walking through a building that you're doing a penetration test on and cataloging all the wireless devices that are broadcasting in that area. Now, what we're going to do is avoid using the built-in Wiggle mapping tools because while they are helpful, they don't provide the functionality that we can basically write for ourselves by using Jupyter Notebook. So I highly recommend using Jupyter Notebook for this sort of thing, and you can install it if you have Python installed by just running pip install Jupyter Lab. Now, once you have that installed, you can just run Jupyter Notebook and it'll go ahead and open. And in my case, I wanted it to open into uh, Firefox instead of Chrome. So I can run it with tac tac browser and then Firefox, and that will indicate which browser you want it to open up in. Now, also, I'm going to be accessing Wiggle.net. And Wiggle.net is where you can upload all of the various captures you have from Wiggle Wi-Fi and access them later, uh, download them, analyze them, really do whatever you want. Now you can of course see all the stuff here that's just different captures that have all been aggregated into one master map and you can search through this all you like. But if you want to stick to your own data and go after specific targets, or if you want to transfer files directly from your phone because you might not want to contribute to this map if you have a sensitive target, you can go ahead and use those CSV files directly in Jupyter Notebooks. Now, if we're going to download it from wiggle.net, you can go to uploads and you can see a list of all the various uploads that you have added and you can select any of them for download just by clicking on them and downloading them to your computer. Now, once you have a file downloaded, we can open a Jupyter Notebook. And in my case, I'm going to open a import wiggle Wi-Fi Jupyter Notebook. All right, so most of this video is going to be about explaining what we're doing here and sort of doing what Wiggle Wi-Fi does very elegantly in our own way to give us complete freedom in terms of what we're mapping and how we're mapping it. Now, by default, Wiggle Wi-Fi will import a lot of data and it will record information using all the available sensors on the cell phone. In, that, in this case, it will also include Bluetooth devices and cellular devices, cellular towers that are used to service the phone, which is really interesting for the map, but not particularly relevant if we're trying to map just Wi-Fi. Part of what we're going to be doing here is writing some conditions to filter the data and clean it before we map it. Because unfortunately, when it comes to data science, if you're working with data that hasn't been properly cleaned, when you try to visualize it, it simply won't work. And that is a lot of what we're going to be doing today. Now, don't despair, this is still really easy, and as you can see, I was able to generate this map in this relatively small amount of code. So let's step through it and see exactly what's going on so we can talk about how we can make this useful for a penetration tester. Now, first we're going to use pandas and folium, 
and these are two libraries we'll be using in order to make sure that we're importing the data and plotting it without needing something like a Google Maps API key, which can get really annoying if you wanna just map something lightweight and not wanna go through the hassle of creating a Google account to do so. First, we're going to read in our data file as DF, which is just abbreviating data frame. And this is going to equal a built-in function, which is pdf.read underscore CSV. Now inside here, we can put basically any CSV file. And we'll put the location of our CSV file here from Wiggle Wi-Fi. And as we go over to the rest of this command, we can specify the delimiter, in this case a comma, because it's a CSV file, and also the encoding, in case it happens to be something aside from the, just the normal. Now this is important because Wiggle Wi-Fi stores its headers in row one, not row zero, the way that we would typically expect. So if you want to make sure that this is properly labeled, you actually need to modify this from the default, which is the header being zero, because Wiggle Wi-Fi stores information about the cell phone that the capture was done on here. Once this is all dumped into the DF uh, data frame, then we can start to do things that are interesting with it, like map it and plot it and do all sorts of other stuff. So in order to plot this data, let's take a look at what it takes to do so. We'll create a variable called myMap, and we'll make myMap equal folium.map, and folium again is the library we're using to map, and then we're going to make the location of the center of the map be basically the mean of the various uh, latitudes and longitudes in our CSV file. So here we're saying data frame right here, dot current latitude, data frame dot current longitude, which is accessing those elements, which contain the latitude and longitude the capture was taken. And we're gonna set the zoom to 12. So what this line is basically doing is getting the, the average of the various latitudes and longitudes and putting our map squarely in the middle of all of them. So really this whole line is centering the map and making sure that it is where it needs to be. And if you want to, you can just hard code in a, a location here by just putting in a, a longitude variable and putting in a, a latitude variable, and that will work just fine. So once we've specified the center of the map, it's time to actually plot the coordinates. And what we'll do in order to do that is say for chords in DF, and chords could also be rows, it really doesn't matter, we can make it whatever we want. Uh, for chords in DF, we're going to grab the current latitude and current longitude, the SSID, the type of network, and then the MAC address of that network. Those are the variables we're interested in so we can make decisions about whether or not we want to plot it or just outright plot those values. Next, we'll check to see if the third uh, coordinate, which is, or the third index variable, which in this case is one, two, three, four, so type, is Wi-Fi. And if instead it says Bluetooth or cellular, then we know it's something that we don't want to include in our map. After that, we'll go ahead and plot our coordinates, which is indexed as chord zero, which is right here, latitude, and chord one, which is right here, longitude. Now if I said chord uh, two, then it would be SSID, and that wouldn't make any sense. But just so you understand what we're doing, we're working with the indexes as we read these in. Now, finally, we'll specify we want this to be red. We want to, the pop-up when we click on it to read the SSID, which is the second index, and then the BSSID, which is the fourth one here. So we're taking these two variables and we're making them pop up when we click on the plotted coordinate, which we've specified right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and click Run. And as you can see, the map has centered in the middle, and we have all of these various things we can zoom in on that reveal themselves to be networks with a BSSID right here. Now we can use this to drill down further and start to plot the data. And what I've done here is actually save this. So the way that we save this into an HTML file is mymap.save, and then specify the output location and the name of the file. In our next input here, I am just running HTML iframe. Uh, we're specifying a width of 60%, a height of 450, and the source is the file that we just generated. However, if we wanna skip this, we can also just use a show option, which skips the, the need to actually go ahead and, and uh, create a separate HTML file if you don't want to. So already we've done a lot. We've managed to take a data file generated from an Android cell phone 
and plot all the various networks in a way where we can click on one, have it pop up, and learn information about what we can expect to see by being in this particular area. If we want to get more interesting, we can add additional if conditions where we're checking to see if a particular string exists in the SSID, for example, maybe if we want to get a list of all the printers in a particular area. Now, I'm going to go down to this last example and show you what happens when we try to work with a massive data set. And this is something that requires a lot more cleaning than if we were going to do this with just a smaller capture file. Now this capture file is massive and it is way too big and contains lots of errors. So I wanna walk you through what can happen if you try to upload a really, really big file into this system and then experience errors with the way that the data is laid out. So when I run this, I will be able to get initially a couple complaints, but also I can see that in the end, I do get a valid data frame. I have the MAC address, the SSID, the authentication mode. So I really have everything I need to plot this as well as the data, uh, the type of, uh, of broadcasting device so I can specify if it's Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever else. And the reason this works on such a large set of data is because essentially what we're doing is stripping out everything that contains a NAN result. Now in our first section here, we're first creating an empty list called valid and invalid. And I'm going to use these to store the values that either are valid, they're Wi-Fi, or we're going to store the entries that are invalid, AKA there's something other than Wi-Fi, or they might contain maybe something that we don't want to include and our valid frames will end up plotting. I'm mostly doing this to keep track of what I'm getting rid of. So I can enter into this section and see if I've included anything in this list I don't actually want to drop. But this isn't strictly necessary. And really what we're going to do is first input this new data file called big lots, because it's a big lot of data. And once we've created our new DF variable, our data frame, we're going to check all the way through it and make sure that all of this is Wi-Fi and we're not dealing with any other Bluetooth or cellular signals. Then we're going to append that to our valid uh, list and we'll have a list that is full of the, very, of the various matching networks that we've managed to capture on our Android device. Now we'll also need to make sure that we don't have any NAN values. And NAND values are basically when Python says, hey, there's nothing in this data frame, so I'm just going to put, in, in actual fact, a float, but when you try to read it as a string, it outputs as NAND. Now what we're going to do is go through again and check every single row in the first column to see if the SSID is NAND. And if we have any results that don't have anything in there, we're just going to get rid of them. Now, finally, what we're going to do is just drop everything that, cont that contains a uh, NAN. And this is a built-in function called dropna that you should be aware of if you're dealing with dirty data that contains a lot of just empty or uh, NAN results, because this can really make it impossible to plot something and cause your entire visualization to fail. Now, I'm taking the valid frames and I'm saying uh, that within these within this data frame, I want to, from the list of valid networks, only accept ones that have full and complete rows and drop everything else that contains a null result. And this can dramatically get rid of the amount of data in your set as well. So I actually went from, uh, I went down by about 50% in this particular action. So keep in mind, this will get rid of anything in any field. It could be the accuracy that's, that's blank. It could be the type that's blank. It could be the SSID that's blank. It doesn't matter what's blank. It will just get rid of that row in order to make sure the data is clean. Now, finally, we're left with this valid frames data frame. And if I just run dot head, it'll show me the first five entries and I can confirm that they look right. Okay, so this is huge still, and there's lots and lots and lots of information that's included in this. Now here in this final plot, I need to make a couple adjustments because the data set is absolutely so large that I'm not able to do the fancy finding the average thing to get the middle of the graph without causing undue processing time. So in this case, I'm just setting a hard and fast location of the middle of the map. And instead of doing some of the other stuff, I'm just plotting everything, provided that there's no question marks in the coordinates, latitude or longitude. Now here, I'm really just checking current latitude and current latitude, and I'm plotting the SSID as well as, well as the type. So within this loop to make sure that our data is clean, we're checking for a question mark in both of the coordinates and then we're plotting to make sure, uh, we're plotting the result on this big map of Los Angeles 
which again is a pretty interesting way of visualizing a large set of data, even though this can take an undue amount of time to process on a computer with limited memory. Now there are ways of outputting this so that we're only looking for, uh, for example, the first 1000 results. And this is a way that we can limit this data set even further to look at it in chunks rather than examining the entire thing if it really comes up our operating system. But in this case, you can see that we plotted all the networks that we managed to filter into our valid frames. And this is a representation of the various networks we picked up with an Android phone. Now, if I zoom in and click on one, we should be able to see that it pops up with the SSID. So this is a success in us plotting just one single variable, the SSID, because I find adding any more would, for this demonstration, take too long to plot. One of the most important things to do when working with large sets of data is to make sure that it's been properly cleaned. And in this example, we've gone through a couple different ways of cleaning the data to make sure it doesn't choke when we try to map it. Now, depending on the source and size of your data, you may run into more problems, and getting to the bottom of this can be pretty frustrating. So I highly advise that if you take anything away from this, it should be first clean your data and then try to map it, rather than doing it the other way around. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.